do so. There's a bunch of tool on the front page. Go check it out and let me know what you think. Start today with uh, eye tracking. Should be a quick one because we'll probably get stuck uh, pretty quickly. So currently we have this Python script that works pretty well. However, few issues with it. That's the bit that actually does the eye tracking. So it's calculating the center of the eye, finding the pupil while looking at this uh, region of interest and uh, doing grayscale transfer and adjusting brightness and using this hue a uh, circle transformation to to actually find the pupil inside the eye and then it's looking at the darkest uh, spot to label the pupil and it's kind of works on one eye but not so much on the other so the red dot is just the center of that the region of interest and the green one is where the pupil is being found well that's where the darkest uh, spot inside that uh, region of interest is and sometimes it even works but uh, yeah obviously needs more improvement and this one's using a lot of my uh, cpu gpu and the fps is only at uh, 15 so normally when i started the first time it was uh, 30 as it should be. I actually have, as you can tell, two cameras connected up, so I was thinking using one for each eye as well. Yeah, and this one will stop working as well if I move outside the, the field of view. It will uh, give an error. Yeah, empty empty array, the usual, the usual stuff. We could fairly easily fix that, but we actually decided to start fresh. Uh, start a new application where we primarily rely on JavaScript instead of uh, Python libraries. So we'll be using, we would not be using Media Pipe. It will be still uh, a Flask application. So there is a potential to have uh, something running in the backend, but primarily relying on JavaScript to reduce my electricity costs. Because if it's in the front end, then you pay for electricity because it's running on your device but then the obviously the quality of it will depend on your memory and so on and so forth yeah and the idea is that eventually we'll have some sort of calibration thing and i do believe that we could show that with the right calibration with a simple webcam running at whatever 30 60 or even 4 15 uh, fps uh, frames per second we can achieve some good results kind of comparable to systems that cost uh, i would imagine you know tens of if not hundreds of thousands of dollars but yes we'll need some sort of calibration procedure where you follow uh, some sort of dots on the that appear on the screen and potentially it will be human calibrated so you click uh, yes i'm happy with that kind of thing that's what i'll be happy with uh, so not fully automated but uh, semi-automated where it tells you to look around keep your head still look around the uh, screen like that and uh, do some snapshots and then hit yes yes i'm happy with that kind of thing so might uh, close this one and move to the second uh, version of it yeah so you see when i close the python application server it's still running in my browser because everything is being uh, loaded into the browser and you will also have all the source code just by looking at the browser yeah i had to run it from the get-go to to see everything but you you get the idea but if i refresh this we'll go open a a current application so this uh, will uh, primarily rely on JavaScript this will have uh, it will still be in the form of uh, a flask application so later if need be we have an option to run things in the background in the, on the backend and it's doing the eye detection here at the bottom so not great and also I do want to use chrome because i kind of trust it a bit more edge should be fine as well i guess and yes obviously we need to improve this one quite a bit this is where the eyes are and we are from memory getting an error hopefully 
one of the bots will be able to fix this for us. How about we do a single shot prompt for this? And by the way, GitHub Copilot was not able to manage it, fix it. So unfortunately, we have to do a copy paste. So we have a HTML, we have a CSS. And yeah, so that, that's the project file and folder structure. Yeah, that looks legit. And now the main thing that does all the heavy lifting is this uh, JavaScript file. As opposed to the previous version where we had the Python doing everything. Running it in a threaded mode, it should be fine. And let's prompt it some more of it. So I shared all the code. This is uh, obviously, as you can tell, an uh, eye tracking a uh, Flask application. We would like to mainly rely on uh, JavaScript on front end. So we use less electricity. So it's working in terms of detecting the eyes, but the pupil detection is not currently working. We're getting the following error. Get the eye bounding box, suggesting a correction for it. Might comment this out quickly. And this one is ensuring uh, that coordinates and dimensions are integers within the bounds. Sounds legit. But as we know, sometimes it only sounds legit, but actually does uh, some rubbish. In this case, it's good that we can actually test if it's working or not. If you can keep the jokes more relevant to the subject at hand, that will be great. Now we're still trying to solve the error. There's something basic that this isn't working. We had the GitHub Copilot making some changes. We have a constant landmarks somewhere. Need to ensure that landmarks array passed to the extract i regions function and it has the right structure. Yeah, compile it is out of whack. Don't have that function. No, I do. Just call something else. Isn't it? Right, so the landmarks should have x, y, width, and height for each i, is it? So it was definitely working better before. Okay, so it seemed to be tracking the eye now. There is only one eye being displayed below the video footage. The X and Y coordinates seem to be working okay. The width and height is not actually doing anything. Do we actually need it? So the question is, where is the other eye? Where is the uh, region of interest? I guess that's the little square. Is it too small, potentially? Look at the image provided. I was hoping eventually the, all the labels will be overlaid on top of the video footage, but we eventually want all the processing of the uh, video to be displayed as well. So the grayscaling, circle finding, uh, darker regions, we want to see everything on the front panel. So using this place phase uh, TensorFlow, so I don't know how well is that working. I guess this one doing um, essentially percent of the face size, a uh, width and height. That looks legit. So we're doing face detection as well. We will eventually show the whole process. So in the text faces, yeah, when it does the rest of the code stuff, that's when I'm having trouble integrating. If predict, uh, prediction length is more than zero, so essentially if there is a face on the screen. So they extract the eyes region now, taking the face size as an input. Okay, now the width and height is uh, changing. The eyes are a bit off. I actually kind of like it instead of overlaying stuff uh, on top of the image, doing it separately. Maybe that's a, a better better way to go. Where's the other eye? We are missing the other eye, and but now it's working better. The numbers, the width and high, including X and Y, are adjusting correctly. Uh, check out the image that I added. I will give you the whole code again because we had the GitHub Copilot uh, doing some adjustments uh, as well.
but if you would like to take over in terms of code development go for it and make funny comments if you feel like it but keep them relevant to the subject at hand yes it does work it says it does already include the includes an acronym so here's how it works so it's good it's explaining what the what we did before question is where's the second eye <laughs> so how we have uh, one eye detected and even that being a bit off we need the second eye yeah then start labeling uh, pupils in it as well yeah so it gets that the accuracy is not great i didn't say it but just uh, gets the context <laughs> it's a more accurate model okay right so this would be python isn't it so we we're currently not using a media pipe what are we using we're using tensorflow blaze base and tensorflow.js yes the previous code was using uh, media pipe but we decided not to go with it okay I'm, I'm not getting any errors for it am i oops no that's we don't want to debug uh, open ai website no, we don't get any errors in javascript and we mainly do in javascript so if there were any errors it would be in javascript yes yeah, so we have that little eye over there that like expands as you come a uh, move closer to the camera that's good but then it's off and we only have the one i think it's the whichever one it is let's do console log we're already doing console log what are we currently logging prediction landmarks yes yeah, so how do we know which one is left and which one is right i mean copal should just be gpt4 anyway right but he gets very different responses for some reason so it's a array of uh, six subs array each contains two elements these are likely landmark likely i need specifics by the place face model each sub array represents landmark on the face for the two elements being the x y coordinates of the landmark right eye left eye nose mouth center right ear left ear okay the function spec the first two landmarks is it even correct to ensure that the eyes are being detected correctly you could uh, visualize the landmarks that sounds good this function already the way and now we do have detect faces now we need detect faces to go to call draw landmarks why not just do it inside left eye side for starting to draw new detections why are we clearing uh, can you do it over here yeah we're getting stuck so it is being called twice the draw eye but then the canvas is cleared and we have the is this the whole function it looks like so this will be async detect faces just comment it out All right so we have the stuff the nose the ears the ears moving ah, it's actually a pretty cool avatar could improve on it then question is do the pupil no the pupil do not work the eyes are just in the same the pupil are just in the same position all the time they have some warning i don't know what that warning is about still have that eye detection that getting smaller larger that's good except we don't have the second eye multiple frames is fine we're still doing like 30 sps i would imagine we'll display it on the screen canvas is being uh, cleared at the start it's this clear rectangle can I just remove it i would imagine nothing will get cleared if i remove this one so we just keep uh, overlaying yep it's moving in and out which is nice are the eyes just jumping from left to right obviously need to clear do we have a function draw no 
So why are you suggesting that? I suspect the two eyes are just being overlaid on one, one on top of the other, the actual eyes. And right, that's a lot of stuff. And there's still only one eye. And this is what we get in the console log. And this is the current code that we have. Hey, can we fix so the other eye is visible? Also, the pupil uh, labels are not working correctly. They don't seem to be moving within the eye. I uploaded a couple of images that uh, show you how the interface looks like. There's another problem that the eye that is being displayed, only one of them, is uh, out of uh, focus. It's uh, not actually focusing on the eye itself. In the little avatar, the pupils are not moving at all. The second eye is not being shown. Other two images are just being overlaid or something. So this one is a webcam best based eye tracking system. Need to still calibrate it, improve it. Eventually it will be available on uh, bionicchaos.com for you to try out for free. Hopefully it works a bit better than this. Now we are also had about like 20 sessions developing this uh, waveform feature extraction and detection for ECG for the ECG game. So the ECG game is already out there. You can go and uh, play it uh, yourself. And then uh, by labeling normal and abnormal ECG, and now we will soon have another version where there is a bot, a robot, a machine, whatever, learning, not learning. It's a fuzzy logic uh, system. So it's all uh, preset. It's a deterministic or more deterministic sense, uh, system than not that will uh, play the game against you. So you can see how the robots will be taking over the medical time series uh, data labeling field. So that's coming up. And another big thing is we also looking at some uh, data sets uh, publicly available. This one is a uh, creative commons. This is what we want to see. Please do publish your data sets under Creative Commons license. This is quite, I forgot the, whatever, whatever the, yeah, I don't want to go into licensing, whatever, but yes, open source, essentially. So this data is open source. Still had to register on the website to actually download it, but there is uh, quite a lot of subjects. So there's uh, about like thousands or so. Yeah, thousand. It's the Functional Connectum Project website. So neuroimaging does set you have both EEG and MRI and the patients are doing some sort of tasks. Um, so we, uh, this will be a big project to explore uh, this uh, data set. So let me know what you think or if you have done, looked at this data set before, do let me know. I downloaded some of the files, apparently I downloaded the wrong ones. Um, and uh, a GPT-4 provided some code that could uh, open it. Eventually we would like to have like a full Flask application that's uh, opening this data, displaying it, processing it, so you can learn. Well, so I can learn. 